that what you mean? So yes. I want to, the witches are floating. We don't have witches. <laughs> Uh, no witches. No witches. Evil spirits. No, no witches. No witches. You don't have any. There are no women who um, who are um, who are evil uh, in and supernaturally powerful. Like black magic in Chinese history or culture. No, no, not in Chinese. What about um, Professor? In, in traditional Chinese culture, no, not in that. Professor Zhu, what about the story of the white snake? Oh, oh. oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> that can be scary. What about the story of white snake? Maybe some of you. What about the black snake? No black snake. <laughs> uh, can somebody tell the story of the white snake? Snake that after a good name, a very long time, and eventually it gains a form of a woman. Okay. But it is not. Yeah, not a okay. A snake took a form of a woman? Did, did it do bad things in the form of a woman or just turned into a woman? It, 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 it married a, a young man. Yeah. yeah. So not nothing evil though. There are no evil influence, right? Yeah. Okay. So she was a good wife even though she was a snake. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Well then, speaking of good wives, do you think that Lady Macbeth is a good wife? You guys got to hear you. Shut up. <laughs> um, some aspects. Yeah. Some like what? Say it loud. Like that, uh, she did a lot of things for Macbeth, but. She's trying. To, she, she's not trying to stop Macbeth from doing something wrong, but uh, egg him on. And what? What? Uh, what, oh. do you, <laughs> what? What do you think? Um, this yeah. is Kate. Kate Wilcox is talking at you. Hi. <laughs> um. So I think Lady Macbeth is manipulating other people and her, also her husbands. So I don't know if she's a very good wife because of that. Because if you're manipulating and, and and you know, she's she's also making fun of her husband. She's being kind of, kind of a you know verbally abusive at times. So yeah. But is, is, but is she loyal? You talk. I'm getting out of here. I want. I don't want to be part of it. I mean, I do want to be part of it, but I want you to talk. You want a conversation. Now you got it. I mean, she does bad things, but isn't she just looking out for her husband? So does that make her a bad wife, technically? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, trying to help her husband so and she really knows well uh, with his husband he know his mind is weak so he tr she tries to persuade his husband to uh, oh sorry her husband to commit the uh, aside uh, the murder so I think uh, she is a good wife to uh, to the extent she wants her husband to be successful yes right? that's a good point that's good. Yeah. <laughs> she considers uh, her own benefits is with her husband, and so that if her husband is suffering a loss, she would be suffering a loss. And if her husband gains something, she would gain something. I think that makes her a good wife, but not necessarily a good person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good distinction. But it. Are you being a good wife if you only want your husband to do well so that you can reap the benefits? 
Yeah, is there anything selfish in what she's doing, do you think? A little bit? Yes. You think so? A little bit. Yeah. Why? I, I don't think she's a good wife because during their communication, she uh, imposed much what he thought, what her, what she thought on um, his husband. She imposes what she thinks on yeah. him. I think she should respect more what Macbeth thinks. Okay, so instead of arguing him down, yeah. saying, oh, okay, maybe you're right, or yeah, thinking, yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Anybody else think, agree, or think she's a... And when Macbeth is about to quit the pl plot, and she acted him on, right. she just uh, persuaded him into doing it, continuing the murder, and... I think How does she persuade him? How does she persuade him? How does she persuade him? He doesn't want to do it. How does she persuade him? Um, she thinks it is being weak and not, uh, not uh, like a man to, not masculine to quit the plot and just abandon. Well, and also she she says you promised. You know, you 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 swore. You made a commitment, so you have to honor your commitment. <clears throat> when if, you, if, you, if you love me, you'd do it. <laughs> another, another. You can go ahead. I think from uh, from the way she persuaded Macbeth, we can see that um, sometimes it's her who wants to gain the power and gain the benefits, but not. Um, uh, not necessarily she really wants her husband to be successful, but herself, uh, she wants to be successful through her husband. Mm. So I think uh, to some extent, she's really selfish and she wants to um, gain the power uh, through the uh, murder of her, uh, committed by her husband. Mm. I wonder. So? Are you yeah. okay? Sorry. Um, I wonder if uh, Lady Macbeth was more superstitious though than Macbeth. Like, if she believed the the witches more than Macbeth, because he was doubting whether or not what they said was true. But I wonder if her super superstition uh, played into that at all. That's a good. Good point because she she talks to the spirits in her speech. Maybe Lady Macbeth is more ambitious than Macbeth himself, so that's why she believed those witches more because she wants that to be true. So she believes that to be true more than Macbeth. I think Lady Macbeth is more able and cruel than Macbeth for uh, listening to the witches. Uh, Prophecy, Macbeth think of uh, that he will be the king one day, but Lady Macbeth thinks that, well, I need to do the assassination right now, mm. tonight. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? But the witches have told Macbeth that he's just going to be a king and they're never going to have, that Banquo is going to be, the, have a whole, his all descendants are going to be kings. But they don't say that Lady Macbeth, I mean, Lady Macbeth has basically given up the possibility of having children, hasn't she? When she says to the, she says to the spirits, "Unsex me." That's the first thing she says. Unsex me. And she says, "Don't give me. I don't want mother's milk anymore. I want gall." And she says, "If I had a baby, and I'd smash its head. If I said I was going to do it." <laughs> Maybe she uh, she's living uh, living in the moment, right? That's it now. <laughs> she's not worried about the future. Um, well, I was wondering um, if, if she was in a society where she did not have to achieve um, success through her husband. I wonder what might be different because she says if if he had not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. So you can almost imagine her as being a, a leader in a battle, or uh, there are other Shakespeare plays where, like uh, Henry VI, where there's a, a a queen who, Queen Margaret, who leads the battles. Um, 
So I'm just, I'm just wondering if it has something to do with the time in which she lives, she, she cannot become queen by herself, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next question. Are there any yeah. great, great leaders, in, uh, women leaders in Chinese history? Empress, we have we have oh, yes. an empress. You have who? Yes. Yes. Can you tell yes. us about her? What 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 do you know about her? She murders her own son. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Why did she do that? <laughs> she she murdered her own son and framed another woman for it. And does what? Blames another woman for it. Blames oh, blames another woman for it. Why? She was the queen of the former two emperors of Tang Dynasty, and she murdered uh, her relevance, uh, many, many relevance, oh, to, to relatives to be the uh, emperor. emperor. Whoa. Is she, a, is she, is she kind of a... Is she a villain or is she a hero? Yeah, she did. Uh, she killed a lot of people, but <laughs> at that time the nation is developing. So she might. She is a villain. She is a bad person, but uh, she did not. She is not a bad leader. Not She's a bad strong, empress. Strong so after she did that, was she a good empress? Yeah. Powerful and wiser. And actually, she has a tomb in China, and she decided not to write anything on it. Hmm. She wanted others to judge her hmm. instead of herself. Wow. Hmm. She's also a very cruel cool person, just like Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Many of the concubines in the court, in the royal court, had been murdered by her. Yeah. Huh. How, how did she murder? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut their bodies. Yeah. Cut their ten and, wow. and the beds. Wow. There you go. And put them uh, into. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Womb. Uh, you can so. No, cook her. They cook her. No, like, don't cook her. <laughs> Just put the bodies pieces where you can. Oh, wow. Yeah. The, there's another figure, uh, which is uh, uh, Cixi, Empress Dowager Cixi, uh, a contemporary to uh, Queen Victoria. Hmm. Yeah. She, she, was, she ruled the country for many years. Huh. Yeah. Did she murder anybody? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, the emperor actually was murdered by, by her before her death. Uh, wow. murdered, uh, the, the emperor. I seem to remember when, uh, when I visited uh, Hangzhou, I visited a place near uh, the West Lake where there was a, a kind of a museum or uh, I think it was a museum, but it was in honor of a great hero of the, of the Three Dynasties period and his mother tattooed on his back, patriotic sayings. So she's not like, she's a different kind of female role model, right? Who urges her son to be a great leader and hero, but she does not in herself murder people. God, why am I not remembering her name? I can remember the characters and the, there's like three or four characters that in service to patriotism, right? Yes. How many? Four. Four. And what what do they mean? The four characters? Be loyal to your country. And devote to your country. And then he becomes a great hero, right? I mean he's like a an amazing figure in defeating people up north who are invaders, right? It's, all, it's kind of vague to me in my recollection, but I know that he was a great hero. And that seems different from the lady who goes and murders people in order to become king or emperor. 
Empress. During the middle of Shang Dynasty, there are a lot of women who are very active. <laughs> and princess, they always want to become Fu Zetian as the model, and to want to be the, uh, the emperor, the ruler of the whole country. Yeah. And during that time, there are a lot of women like Lady Macbeth. Hmm. But most of them failed to accept the emperor. Hmm. Hmm. You know, one of the things you were saying about Lady Macbeth that, that didn't make sense to me is because you were saying that how strong and, and comparing her to say like the Empress who is who was very strong and an effective leader. But once Lady Macbeth commits murder, she becomes eventual, I mean pretty quickly she becomes ineffective. And weak. Yeah. She has, right? She has bad dreams. She's always rubbing her hands, sleepwalking. She, she's like she's in hell already. Yeah. And Macbeth becomes very strong and murders everybody. I don't she's, think Macbeth is becoming very strong because she's just pretending to be very strong. She's telling himself she's this. He's, he's deceiving himself. So, uh, what the witches said is true. I believe in them. But if there's a, there's a voice echoing, uh, hidden behind it, that he is really afraid. He has to persuade him that he is not afraid. Right. It could be like the, the argument, like, why, you know, in ancient myth, Greek mythology, uh, Achilles runs into battle, you know, and he's like supposed to be courageous, but I mean, if you were immortal, you know, I mean, that's, and you couldn't die, then is it really courageous? So I guess that could be like the witch's prophecy. And a lot of the people that he's killing, he's only killing them because he's afraid. He's afraid that they're going to take his power from him. So I don't know if you can really say that he's become strong because he's killing these people. Also, he's like ordering the death of women and children. Yeah, so, no one thinks that's courageous. <laughs> yeah. What I kind of thought is, you know, he needed that drive from Lady Macbeth to commit the first murder. And then after that, I think he kind of embodies um, the qualities that Lady Macbeth had to get that murder done. You know, he even tells his murderers for Banquo that they lack manhood, which is something that Lady Macbeth continuously told him. And so I kind of thought of it as Macbeth, you know, mimicking or, you know, copying his wife since yeah, really she true. was being so effective in manipulating him. He's embodying the same qualities and mannerisms to, you know, get his later plots achieved. And so still, even though Lady Macbeth, you know, isn't physically present in these murders, you know, she's still kind of present in the sense that he is embodying her. And I think you're right. And maybe there's another thing that drives Macbeth to the later, latter murder, because as you see that at first he has a good control of his foundation. He did not, uh, he did not um, perform it. He did not want to commit the murder. He's controlling himself. But when he committed the first murder, he lose his control. And it is like falling off a cliff. Before he f fall off that cliff, he's on that mountain, you can control himself. But if you are in the air, you cannot control yourself. You cannot just fly, you will fall. So <laughs> he fall into the hell and he just did all those terrible things because he can no longer control himself. Yes, I agree. Uh, I think he, uh, he has no way to return and he has to continue his murder to avoid his and if he uh, doesn't do that, 
and uh, as the wishes predict that predict that uh, the bankers' uh, children or grandchildren will have will succeed to uh, will have the thrones. So he has to do something to stop this. And uh, actually, I think Macbeth is still weak because we can see from his appearance in the banquet when he sees the ghost of bank of banker and uh, he is really uh, afraid and he um, he can can hardly control himself. So I think uh, he's still weak, but uh, he's trying to um, continue his murder. Uh, sorry, continue. Uh, to consolidate his throne, to prevent being uh, being get getting by others. Yes. So why? Um, I wonder why is he not? Why can't he be happy? Isn't this what he wanted? Yeah, it's what he wanted, right? Hmm? Yeah. He wants to be king. I think it's just like uh, Henry the Fourth who murdered uh, Richard II. Mm. Uh, Macbeth also have a very deep guilty conscience, mm -hmm. and uh, the ghost of Banco saw it about his scene. Uh, <laughs> perhaps hallucination, mm -hmm. not a yeah. real ghost. Right. And also the knocking at midnight. Mm. Yeah, uh, but nobody there. Yeah. They're not knocking. Right, right. Yeah. Do, you so find it, do you find it difficult to believe that somebody would feel so guilty about murdering that they would get all upset about that? Like, you're the king and you just murdered the guy, couldn't you just kind of like forget about it? I mean, I, it's, it's interesting to me because Professor Shen is right. Shakespeare keeps presenting these people who are complicit in murder or commit murders as being conscience struck. But I wonder how many people are really in that situation are actually, I mean, is that hard to believe that they would be so upset? I think it's, it's also interesting to think about how Macbeth is a warrior. So this isn't like, this is not his first murder per se. I guess this is, might be his first intentional murder outside of war, but. I feel like it's the first time he's going against his loyalty though. Because, like, in the lead-up to him killing Duncan, all he talks about is how, like, like if there was no reason, there, there's no reason for him to commit the murder because all of his loyalty lies with Duncan. Duncan's not bad. Duncan has no reason to die. It would only just be him furthering himself. Right, like, he, it's when he has, like, a moral issue or, like, you know, the back and forth of is this moral, is this immoral in the fact that I'm loyal to him, he is my king, he just promoted me, you know, I just swore my loyalty to him. I have no reason besides my own selfish gains to kill him. That, or while in war, it's like I'm doing this for my country and I'm following my king's orders and things like that. So this is the first time where, and you can even think of it, you know, we have soldiers and things today who struggle, you know, with the same thing. Uh, what's, when it comes to murder, what is seen as moral and immoral? And that's its own conversation entirely. But I think that is the line where, you know, that's why he has that guilt, because he himself doesn't think that it's right. So I think there's one more thing, that when he is fighting those other soldiers, other warriors in the battlefield, the other warriors also want to kill him. They fight yeah. him, but they fight back. But when he's murdering his king, his, the Duncan, Duncan is, uh, King Duncan is, um, it loves him and it trusts him very much. So that's why he can succeed in murdering king, the king. And the king is not putting up a, a fight. He is fast asleep. And he just did that to some innocent people who didn't fight him. And, and so is Banco. Banco at that time uh, it didn't seem to fight, but he just sent some murder, murderers to kill Banco. And, so, what about the difference between him and Claudius? 
I think every king who gets his throne uh, unjustifiably uh, worries about uh, uh, when one day others will take place of him uh, in the same way. Uh, just like uh, Claudius is so afraid of Hamlet and uh, Henry IV is so afraid of Hotspur. Uh, this may be worrying about one day he will be uh, murdered and assassinated by someone else to replace him to be the king again. So it's just part of the job description if you're the leader if you're the king or the, the emperor or the whoever that you're going to kill anybody that you perceive to be a threat well it's not specifically like just because you're king or emperor but how the way you got your position you think that's going to happen to you like if you didn't get it you know through inheritance or something it's like if you killed the king it's like well i did that so what's stopping someone else from doing it to me? okay that type of thing i think that's what he's trying to say do you agree with that did you hear what she said i thought that was pretty smart <clears throat> it's only if you if only if you kill your way to the throne are you worried about that it's like karma is that no, true yeah, no. well in, in julius caesar Brutus can justify his killing of Caesar through it very elaborately, and it doesn't work out, but he he doesn't seem tortured with guilt the same way. Do you, do you know the Julius Caesar? Have you read Julius Caesar? Yes. Yeah. I love Caesar, but I love Rome more. There you yes. go. Yeah. So Macbeth never argues that he would be a better king than Duncan, therefore Duncan must go. So I think you're right that he's not he didn't read the inscription, be loyal to your country, right? He should have read that. He should have come to Hong <laughs> Yeah, any question from the back row? I have a question. I'm curious about you. Um, does Lady Macbeth have a conscience? Why does Macbeth feel guilty and Lady Macbeth doesn't seem to feel guilty? She seems tormented, but it seems more that she's tormented because her king is now distant from her, and she thought they would be even more united through this act, and now they're separate, right? But yes, this, right? So is that a conscience? Does she have, because there are people with no conscience, right? There are, we call them psychopaths. Uh, I think she also have conscience. She That's why so? she's, she was sleeping, uh, sleeping okay. walking here. Yeah. And the, when she says, um, sex me, she, she just tried to throw that conscience away oh, so that yeah. she could do what she can do. But the, after that, the conscience will come back and make her weak again, and she will be very guilty. She feels very guilty, and she's trying to wash her hands. She just hmm. get tormented by that conscience, and, the and conscience, generally becomes mad. Yeah, the conscience is driven for mad. Yes, OK. And also has conscience to get him murder because uh, <clears throat> she said that if the, the king does not like her father, she would uh, commit the murder mm. herself. Right. But as she didn't murder oh. her <laughs> yeah. herself, yeah, she think it is uh, her conscience that mm. stops her. Yeah. Anybody disagree? Anybody think she's just <laughs> cold hearted? Psychopath? <laughs> you know the word psychopath? It's a you know, clinical term, I guess. <laughs> I think she wants to be conscienceless. Yeah. But she just doesn't manage it. And she, like you said, she, she, the conscience comes back. She tries to get rid of it, and it comes back. Like a ghost, huh? Yeah. yeah, but that's conscience stuff make cowards of us all, right? That's, that's what Hamlet says. But I was wondering, you know, you're talking about somebody who murders his way to the throne, ends up being murderous himself. And I understand that Claudius is like that to some extent with Hamlet, because Hamlet really is acting crazy. But Claudius doesn't seem so guilt-ridden to me. And he also seems to be very much in control. Even though he just murdered, he murdered his brother and married his brother's wife. But he, 
Yeah, but if he prays to God, yeah, <laughs> he is praying. Right. There was a scene in the confession where yeah. Hamlet was about to murder him, and he was admitting to all his wrongs. Yeah, he says, my offense is rank, it stinks to heaven. I know, he says all that, but he sure does keep it under control, doesn't he? Yeah. He doesn't act out the way, he doesn't see ghosts, he well, doesn't I... moan and groan about it, he doesn't go on murder sprees. But He's a very see... effective ruler. But when he is seeing what Hamlet is, uh, that mousetrap play, he, he, he becomes very frightened, he becomes upset, and he loses control a bit. Well, also, I think, think about what he's always talking about in his off hours is drinking. I think he numbs himself with alcohol. Like he's always saying, hey, let's drink a toast. <laughs> Yay, to Hamlet. Fire off some cannons and let's drink some more. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how he deals with it. You know? Maybe. And then he's hung over and he, then he prays. But he also, he, and his, he and Gertrude have a great relationship. He's murdered her husband and apparently, I mean, judging from what Hamlet has to say, they have a very active love life. Yeah. What do you think? And we all know from the poorer speech that being a drunk and having an active love life don't really go together. <laughs> I think that's a big reason why um, Tom Hughes didn't feel guilty because um, he had his reasons because he loved the truth. So um, he can um, commit the murder in the name of the law. So he can find his own reasons, mm -hmm. unlike the um, fact that. Yeah. Maybe maybe old Hamlet was not a very affectionate husband. <laughs> we don't know. Or maybe, you know, I don't know, it's interesting to try and compare. I mean, I was thinking about Claudius and Macbeth, but it's also interesting to think about Gertrude and, and Lady Macbeth. Hmm. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Uh, she's not doing any of this. Uh, I, I know she doesn't know, she isn't in on the murder, she doesn't urge Claudius to do it, or we don't know, there's no hint that she knows anything about it. Although in the sources, she does. Hmm. I'm sure there's been an interpretation where she was, some interpretation and performance where she was in on it, probably. Uh, I guess, yeah. You have to cut lines. <laughs> yeah, in, in the last scene, uh, when the hermit is about to drink the poison wine, mm -hmm. her, her mother apparently knows it, it's mm. poison. Yeah, you think so? So, so she, she drank the she, wine for, for hermit. Yeah. But, yeah. but there's still some nest. Uh, <laughs> the, maybe, I, I think that she do not know that she doesn't. She doesn't know that uh, the the wine is poison. Right. Because right. Exactly. She does not know the wine is poisoned. And she becomes poisoned. She is trying to warn her son that it's right. poison. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, who acts crazy in that play, though, who acts more like Macbeth in Hamlet is Hamlet himself. He sees ghosts. He goes crazy. He can't control himself. He's acting more like a guilty person than Claudius is. I mean, if you judge by Julius Caesar and Macbeth, isn't he? Well, well I find it strange because... We, we usually we consider revenge as something better than murder. You see that it is more righteous to revenge than to murder. You, we will consider Hamlet a hero, but Macbeth a villain. But is it really so? They are all overcome by such a feeling inside them that in Hamlet's case, it's revenge. 
and in Macbeth's uh, case, it's ambition. But is it really is it really just to judge them by their different motives, or it is or if it's just a same kind of tragedy that one is overcome by something in his mind, going on in his mind, what's going around him, and he cannot stand it, and that thing overcomes him. Yeah. So this is true for Brutus and for Hamlet and for, and for Macbeth. They've got lots going on up here, right? In, they, they, and they react, they, re, they react with, to that inner, inner, inner world. Can Lady Macbeth understand as one of the inner parts? The, maybe she has strengthened the things of Macbeth, like she always encouraged the Macbeth to continue to do that kind of murder. And um, during that time, I think Lady Macbeth, and after she murdered and, and done a lot of things, she soon got punished and died before the Macbeth got his punishment. And I think from this part that uh, because uh, she was reflect the part of the Macbeth and she soon become weaker than Macbeth. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. She does become weaker. I think I was talking about that with uh, this class over here before we hooked up, before we made our connection, that Macbeth starts up here and Lady Macbeth here, and then Macbeth goes this way and Lady Macbeth goes that way. They cross in the middle of the play and maybe right around Duncan's murder. And then she becomes much more, she starts seeing things that aren't there and he loses all imagination, doesn't care what he sees. He becomes hardened killer, and she becomes a conscience-struck crazy woman. And suicide, like Ophelia. Like Brutus's wife. It is interesting. What, you know, the uh, Cassius plays a role sort of like Lady Macbeth to Brutus, urges him to kill. And the ghost plays a role sort of like Lady Macbeth toward Hamlet. All these people trying to make other people do their killing for, <laughs> for them or with them. What were they just saying? Ghost <laughs> <laughs> and Hamlet and Lady Macbeth and Macbeth is just like a driven force inside the hero. Is, the main character they has this force tri driving him to what he does and they just kind of become overthrown by it. But then there, it is very strange because it seems that Lady Macbeth is no longer driving Macbeth to do all those things anymore. Right. But still doing that. It's kind of that this kind of driven force is deprived. It left Lady Macbeth. It has become independent and it no longer relies on Lady Macbeth. And in the Hamlet case, the ghost, yeah, the ghost um, no longer, no longer uh, drives um, Hamlet forth. Uh, but well, when Hamlet is uh, trying to revenge, the ghost he did not see, he did not see that ghost again. You see that when he see the ghost, he is not yet trying to uh, do that revenge. He's not. He's not trying to revenge yet. 
Well, he sees the ghost again when he's in Lady Macbeth, uh, in Gertrude's bedroom or private chamber. After the play within the play, before he kills Polonius, he sees the ghost again. But this time, he, nobody else sees the ghost. Gertrude doesn't see the ghost, but he sees it. It's like Banquo's ghost. Oh, our players have come back. Our players. We got one more out there. They got you. We've been talking about uh, Lady Macbeth primarily and whether she's a good wife and, and also uh, whether it's a the how conscience struck or stricken she becomes. Uh, after she, and then we were talking about comparing other heroes who are tempted to commit murder by other people, like Cassius tempting Brutus and the ghost tempting Hamlet to kill. So that's where we were just now. They were out practicing a, a scene that we want to, we're going to try and play the scenes leading up to the banquet scene next week when we all get together and perform. So we look forward to that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we do too. Right? Yes. <laughs> and uh, there's a few people that have been trying in this class that have been trying to con to co to contact people there, and they haven't gotten replies yet. So if you get messages from these students, please do try and make contact. Okay. On, on Canvas. On Canvas. Yes. Yeah. People are. Are you on Canvas? Do you know Canvas? <laughs> I think you all have EIDs on Canvas, which is this software for the, this class. When I send out messages to this class, I send them out to you too. I don't know if you've been getting the messages or not. Okay. All right, then, well, should we sign off for the night? I mean, for the morning? <laughs> All right. Good to see you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Have a good time, Clayton.